Right, traders, that's one o'clock UK time, and uh, we are going to get going here in just a second. <coughs> Okay, um, if you can hear me loud and clear, if you could type a Y in the chat box and you can see my uh, Tickmill welcome screen, uh, just let me know that we are good to go. Uh, before we jump into today's content, as always, want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Uh, most importantly for today's discussion is the uh, views expressed by me are solely mine and they're not representative of or indicative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe. Uh, for those of you here for the first time, brief introduction to myself. My name is Patrick Munley. After I graduated from university, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup post a merger in late 2004. I then moved on to explore my passion for markets. Uh, this was around the beginning of 2005, so with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the S&P 500 and after some beginners early ran out, I ultimately took a significant six-figure financial hit, uh, for basically averaging down into losing positions was my, uh, my strategy at that stage. Um, so I really had to step back from the markets and decide uh, whether or not uh, it was feasible to me uh, to make a living from the markets. So I decided to seek out a mentor, someone who had demonstrated an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years, it was a time during which I, it's not just my technical game in terms of de developing and researching strategies, extensively back and forward testing them and underpinning them with a rigorous risk management approach. But I guess most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably the uh, critical watershed shift for me was migrating from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to step back uh, and stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset, and you understand that the true nature of trading is simply a numbers game in which you are playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment in that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next hundred trades. because so I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Uh, from 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Uh, from 2010, I've personally mentored over 100 private traders of all experience levels from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. Uh, over the years, I've consulted numerous brokers and trading education brands, contributing uh, written content, webinars, and live presentations on a range of topics from market analysis trading strategy development and execution. In addition to my fund management and private mentoring, I'm also resident market expert for Tickmill, providing daily market analysis, a daily market outlook, which uh, you can access through the blog. You can also uh, put your email in there and you can get these updates uh, delivered directly to your inbox. Um, my other, I guess, passion project is as head of trading and trader education for a leading trading education brand called fxcareerswap.com. We offer uh, development and funding to retail trading talents. At fxcareerswap, we don't just develop retail traders' market and trading strategy knowledge, but we also work on mindset development through a structured program that culminates in um, managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. And for those uh, that are interested, uh, you can call the trade desk in London and they will provide further information about what it is we do at CareerSwap. Alternatively, drop the, uh, drop the team an email and they'll come back to you uh, with 
additional information uh, about uh, FX Career Swap. So that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. Uh, now let's, uh, let's jump into uh, the charts today and, uh, and see where we might find some, uh, some opportunity. We're going to start with uh, we've got the, uh, the dollar yuan, uh, the Chinese yuan. Uh, the reason why I pulled this chart up is I want to, to uh, just do a, a, a little bit of education stuff here at, uh, at the beginning. Um, I, get a, I get questions about identifying whether or not we're, um, whether we're in impulsive or corrective phases in the market. And um, to my mind, the, uh, the easiest way of identifying uh, the phase we're at is by understanding the, uh, the nature of uh, swing cycles within the markets. What you will find is that there are uh, harmonic rotations that occur over and over again. Now, do they recur every time? No, and we don't need them to occur every time for them to, be, to provide useful uh, and actionable information. But if we think in terms of impulse legs, more often than not, what we're going to find in terms of an impulse is we should see uh, five, seven, nine, 11, or 13 swings. And the, you don't need to sit around counting these things. What you want to be watching for is divergence. And what, what I use for divergence is this psych indicator, which is ostensibly an enhanced RSI that just gives better information than the standard RSI. But what you're looking for in terms of if, when you're, if you're looking to, to trade a correction versus an impulse, you just want to, I did, really what you want to be able to do is just pull up the chart and, and see if versus the current swing high or current swing low, how, uh, first of all, obviously, have we been moving from the upper left to the lower right or the lower left to the upper right? That gives you an idea of uh, the current trend move that we're in. So in this instance, we're looking at moving from the upper left to the lower right here. And note that on this low we have just printed, we haven't actually got divergence. Psych indicator uh, made a, a new low into this low swing here. So then we wanna think, if we're thinking in terms of these harmonic swings, well, from the high, we can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so to complete this pattern, what we'd anticipate is a minimum of another downswing to give us a nine, a nine count rotation to the downside, which doesn't mean that we have to, uh, you know, make massive new lows here, but certainly you can see support. So if we make another low here in this cycle into this support, take out the prior low, and at that juncture, we've got significant divergence, and which uh, we can see is potentially setting up here. So we're just looking really for price to make a new low, but the psych indicator uh, to not make a new low. So maybe it does something like this and or, or jigs around here, but doesn't make a new low. So then we've got divergence and we've got a, a cycle count that suggests that we've seen uh, an impulse move. Well, then we can start to think about uh, corrective cycles and the, the core corrective cycles we're looking at are swings of, of, of three or seven swings. Now, when I say three swings, what I'm generally talking about when we talk about corrections is this type of move. And I'm looking for an equality objective. So if we have, um, what, if we make this low here and we've got the divergence, then what we look for is an impulse move, a correction, and then another impulse move. And more often than not, what we're looking for is for that, uh, is for an equal legs objective. Okay. Now, one, if, if we get a if, if we get a confirmation here, let's say we get a bearish reversal pattern, or um, or we just enter the trade at the equal legs, if that's how we, we decide to, to trade the strategy. What we want to make sure of is that by the time we retrace fifty percent of the last leg, so of the of what Elliott wave would be the, the B to C leg. By the time we get into the fifty percent retracement. This, this position needs to be risk-free. And why is that? Well, there is always the potential, um, and this is, again, you know, the nature of trading. We're, we're dealing in a, an ambiguous environment. We don't know for certain what's going to happen next. We're just, again, applying the probabilities. Once we, get, once we pull back here, what there is the potential for is that we actually get a double correction. 
And so a double correction would mean that we are going to see a seven swing pattern. So we'd be anticipating this type of move. Still corrected. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we get a double correction. Now within these swings, we can see, um, we can, uh, yeah, guys, if, uh, just sorry, with respect to the uh, questions, if you can just hold, hold those to the end, I'll, um, I'll open up a QA and a at the end and you can either type it into the chat box or, um, or I can unmute your mic, etc. It's just that I keep getting, I get alerts during the um, during the presentation, and it's a little bit distracting. So if you can just make a note of your questions, and then I'll open up a Q and A at the end, and you can uh, you can chime in. Thanks very much. Um, so going back to the patterns. So what we're looking for is by the time we get into the fifty percent retracement here, we should make new lows if the correction is complete. If we hold the fifty percent here, more often than not, not every time but more often than not, we'll see a double corrective pattern play out. And so we should see seven, a seven swing scenario develop. And more often than not, when we see the seven swing, we'll be looking at trading into the 50, 61.8, or even the 78.6% retracement, but that would still be a corrective pattern if this is an impulse leg to the downside. And so what, what are we trying to, what, what am I saying here? Well, what we're ultimately saying is that if this, if this impulse leg is valid, and the corrective cycle plays out either in three or seven swings. On occasion, rarely though, you can get an 11 swing cycle it, that can still be corrective. More often than not, you're gonna see three or seven. And so what you're looking for is, once you see that that's, this pattern play out and you get the, you know, you get a reversal signal versus however you, you, you enter, what, how, you, you, what, how you define your entry strategy, um, once you get that, then what you're ultimately looking for is at least, a, one second, you're at least looking then for a 50% correction in three waves, more often than not. So this scenario. Into the 50 to 61.8% retracement, that would be your minimum target. Uh, playing the playing this corrective pattern because again what can occur then is we get a bigger correction here with, on a higher degree time frame I'm, we're on a four hour chart here let's say maybe on the daily now and we could equally we, we could then see another extension to the upside which could still be corrective or we're going to get into this area and we're going to see or we, we should then see more often than not we'll get an impulse leg to the downside to take out the prior lows. Does that make sense? If you could type a Y in the chat box if you're following along. <coughs> okay, good stuff. So this, this is just, this, this, these patterns play out over and over again and they play out on all time frames. They, they're fractal in nature. So you really just want to have in mind when you're looking at the chart, you know, when you open up a chart and you're looking for an opportunity, have I got divergence on the last swing low or swing high? If I have divergence, can I characterize the pattern as impulsive? So can I see, can I eyeball uh, as five, seven, nine, 11 or a 13 swing cycle? If so, then high probability that you've got an impulse pattern completing, and then you should be looking to play a, a minimum, a three-wave corrective pattern. And if, if we're playing the three-wave corrective pattern, the minimum retracement we should be looking for in terms of FIB, so fibbing from the high to the low, wherever that low is, is a 23.6% to 38.2%. That would be the minimum ex expectation for a corrective pattern to play out to. And more often than not, where we stall out at the 38.2% or the 23.6% and we don't make new lows, then that tells us we're probably going to be seeing a double corrective pattern. So I hope that, uh, I hope that helps just to clarify uh, how, to, uh, how to get a better, set, without getting into uh, the, you know, the, the nitty gritty of Elliott waves and having to uh, number and label everything. If you just think in terms of swing cycles, and remember those numbers, 
then that's an easy way for you to establish, are we in an impulse phase or are we in a corrective phase? And then that information can obviously then feed into your trading setups and how you, how you manage your trades. But remember, when you're playing the corrective patterns, you want to be risk-free by the time you're retesting 50% of the prior swing. That's just some good trade management tactics uh, to employ. Right, let's, uh, let's remove drawings from here and let's uh, let's take a look around some of these charts and see what we've got developing so this is the s p 500 and uh, from this low here we have now got one two three four five six seven a seven swing cycle with divergence and so we're now putting in a corrective pattern we've had an initial impulse move off the low how do we go a good way of also thinking in terms of impulse moves to the downside, have we broken the prior support zone? So the prior support zone for the here was clearly this 41.28. We sliced through that. And so that now suggests we've got the first leg of what is potentially going to be a three-way corrective pattern in play. And so we corrected back into the... Uh, let's draw this in here. So we got back into the 61.8% retracement zone, double top rolled over. So what we, there are two, two things we're expecting to occur here now, or two potential scenarios that give us, uh, give us opportunity. So we're either going to be doing a straight three-wave corrective move here down into the equality objective. So when I talk about the equality objective, what I'm talking about is this, this scenario here. So immediately we've got a downside target in terms of the S&P here, 39.68, back into these prior site price swing highs. So that would be a natural area for a correction to complete. We're in a seasonally weak period for the S&P. May doesn't tend to be uh, particularly profitable uh, in terms of the upside, but pay attention, June does tend to be. So if we got a pattern here, if this pattern played out in, and, uh, and we take out these this low, the prior lows, then we'd be looking to this, this zone as to act as support. So we'd be looking for bullish reversal patterns, set long positions, and ultimately we'd be looking then for the S&P to make new highs. Now, is it always gonna be that simple? Well, let's see, because what we could be doing is we could have a more complex corrective pattern developing here. So we could see this scenario. So we have this move, which plays equal legs here, and then we get the equal legs to the downside. So just thinking in terms of those swings that I just talked about, uh, this, this would be a, a normal corrective scenario. Um, equally, what we, what we want to pay attention to is if we take out these lows, then we're closely going to be watching the equal legs here and looking for support down into, uh, down into this zone. So this, what, what, we, what we get with this, being able, being able to understand these swing patterns, is we can identify or see where the high probability next trade locations are setting up. So for now, uh, we're in kind of in no man's land here uh, at the moment, and we could e equally, what we can see play out is we can see a three wave corrected move here, and then see that low before uh, completing the equal legs before taking off again to the upside. So we, uh, at the moment, the focus, whilst we hold resistance here at 41.85, the high probability scenario is that we're going to get a test down into that equality objective. Let me just draw it in using the trend base fib tool. So, so our downside objective at the moment is 39.80. And certainly if we get down into this area, these prior highs, this will be a natural logical area to see bullish reversal patterns to uh, set long positions. Similar story here in the Dow. <coughs> Uh, let's bring this in here. So we have an A, B, and we have a C objective now down at 32.17. Now, are we necessarily going to go there in a straight line? More often than not, we're not. So we could see this type of scenario develop and, uh, and then get down to this area, and then we can realign with the, with the dominant trend. And the reason why we're, we're interested in that is because we didn't really see significant divergence into this prior high. So that suggests that this is a wave three high and we're just simply carving out an interim wave four uh, base here before we, uh, we extend to the upside again. 
And what, also what you want to be thinking about in, in terms of trade location, you really want to stay out of the middle of these ranges. This is where you're more likely to get uh, chopped about. What you want to be thinking about is trading these extremes. So trading the equality objectives and watching how price responds at those equality objectives, because that's where you tend to see the better trading opportunities develop. Uh, let's take a look at the Nikkei. So the Nikkei is, uh, is the weakest really of the indexes at the moment. What we have here is potentially, just like we were just talking about, a double correction. So we could get another swing here, like so, like so, and then another leg to the downside. Well, what we want to see here is we're trading into this, this would have been the equal length objective. And we did get a, an initial bounce here, but we've now traded down into the support zone. So I think, we, uh, I think we've still got a bit more work to do on the downside in terms of the Nikkei, and that would uh, fit with the idea <coughs> with respect to uh, the S&P having, uh, having a little bit more to do on the downside as well. Uh, pay attention to this, this resistance zone here. Whilst we hold that, I think we, uh, we can see another leg to the downside in terms of the Nikkei. Dollar index. So the dollar index looks like it's uh, it's putting in, uh, well, here we go. So this is a prime example. What have we got on that last low? We've got divergence. So where, where are we in terms of the swings? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Um, so 13 swing cycle into support with divergence. So then my reasonable expectation now is that we are going to see a corrective phase play out before we likely trade lower in terms of the dollar index. So I'm watching what we want to, as we pull back here, what we're ideally looking for now is to hold this zone as, as support, uh, set up a, the first equal legs objective, then we likely pull back. So then what we're looking for is that either three, four, five, or seven, uh, seven swing correction before we, uh, realign with the major trends and, and likely head lower. So there's a, a, a you know working example of what we've just been talking about in terms of uh, in terms of the cycles. The first thing to note is the divergence. Gold <coughs> looks like it's impulsive to the upside. Uh, we've got a bit of divergence here into that last high. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11 swings. So what we uh, what we reasonably expect now with the divergence is a three-way corrective move. And the first port of call, I think, will be the ascending trend line support. If we get bullish reversal patterns there, then the opportunity is on the long side in gold uh, to extend higher. And what you'd be looking for then is a new high, a pullback, and another high. So you get that 13 swing to the upside. And then we likely see another correction in either three or seven swings. Silver, <clears throat> again, what have we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Likely three wave pullback. We've got versus this swing high, 28, 24. We look for 26, 82. And then we look for new highs in terms of silver. Crude oil, a bit more of a sideways market here. Um, we've taken out trend line support. We back tested it. Um, from below and we're seeing some weakness here. So what we'd be looking for now is the uh, equality objective. So a three wave pattern uh, would actually put us down into the 59 area as we hold 63.98 as resistance. Copper, what have we got here from this swing low? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. You could probably even get uh, 30, you could probably put in a 13 count there and we have divergence. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm looking for a seven swing pattern here to test back into the 450 area before again then thinking about certainly retesting, if not taking out uh, the prior highs. <coughs> Ethereum uh, correcting, obviously, we've got divergence. Um, and so what we're looking for, one, two, three, four, five, six, looking for another low here to complete either the first leg of, uh, of a bigger corrective pattern, or we're going to complete the correction in seven swings 
and then we can start and we can think about um, certainly getting a retracement into 50% of this original decline here. Um, so back up into uh, 2,566. And if we get through there, then we can start to think about new highs and actually the corrective cycle ultimately being complete. Swissy, similar story here. You can see the divergence. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, you can easily count 13 swings to the downside there. Got the divergence. So what can we reasonably expect? Well, if we uh, apply the... So initially we'd look for a test of 90.79 um, if we can take out these prior highs. And then we'd be thinking either a correction to play out in three or seven swings or potentially 11 before we see uh, another attempt to the downside. On a CAD, <coughs> I think we're, uh, we're probably in correct. Well, we've got divergence uh, versus the last high here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And then we're looking for at least a three wave correction. Uh, and most likely we'll see a seven, a, a seven swing pattern here because of uh, the steepness of the decline that we've seen. So watching for the loony to hold rate support now somewhere in the 12050. Uh, would be an opportunity to, to get in on the long side and initially obviously paying for the equal legs, 122.50. This is, uh, these, the, the price patterns I'm drawing here, obviously, I don't know for a fact that these are going to play out, but more likely than not, if we get a pullback that holds this zone, I know that we're, we've got a high probability of seeing an equal legs correction play out. Euro. <coughs> So uh, the euro divergence, what's the cat? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 into the high divergence. So what am I expecting? Well, I can reasonably expect at least a three wave and potentially a seven swing corrective pattern as we hold this high here. Euro yen. <coughs> Similar story, divergence into the high. So what I'm looking for here would be a break of the trend line to, uh, to initiate the, the, an impulse leg. And then we'd be anticipating at least a three wave corrected move to play out. Uh, Euro CAD, I, I shared this one uh, with the group yesterday. Um, so we had this cycle here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 swing bags of divergence, and then we had uh, this initial move off the lows. So we measure this leg here versus the swing low here, and we traded up pretty much to the tick, 48, 148, and that 38.2% retracement. And so, um, so we're looking now for at least a test of the 50% retracement here. And um, and then we could see another, we either, from that, we either hold the 50% zone, 50 to 61.8%. If we do, then we know the high probability is that we're gonna see a, a seven swing pattern play out before we attempt new lows. Sterling, a little bit more complex here. So stick just the, the wedge pattern with divergence, always a high probability scenario. So I'm anticipating we get a pullback here in sterling into maybe the 140, 140.60 area. I've got an order to sell uh, sterling at 141 and I'm looking for a, a three wave corrected move, probably back into three or, or seven swing, back into the 50% retracement of this, uh, of this wedge is what I'd be looking for there. <coughs> sterling again, yeah, again, shared this, we've taken out the resistance now, we've got bags of divergence. so. Just looking for that first pullback as an opportunity to get in on the short side. And you obviously they were targeting that either three wave or that seven swing pattern in terms of sterling yen, uh, sterling CAD. So we've got a impulse move to the downside. And look, what we're looking for here is a correction. So through this uh, 171.50 area, we can look for one, uh, 172.59 um, as an upside objective. So that would be the equal legs ABC corrective pattern uh, versus this last impulsive decline with divergence. Um, conscious of time here, let me just see. 
Swiss yen. Just take a look at one more. So again, into that wedge with divergence, breakdown, retest the wedge from below. So if we can get once we get through these prior lows, then we then we can start to think about uh, an equal legs objective. So we at least anticipate a move down to test 120.30, uh, 120.13 as uh, a support in the um, in the Swiss yen here. So that's um, that's a whistle stop tour of some of these setups that I'm watching at the moment. Um, I hope the, uh, the the swing cycles that I've identified uh, will help you in terms of being able to be able to open up a chart pretty quickly and identify whether or not there's a near term opportunity. Um, what you the highest probability in terms of trading is trading corrections versus an impulse uh, to align yourself with the trends. So um, understanding the the natural harmonic rotations in the market should help you uh, improve your trade location and entry. So with that said, are there any questions? <coughs> Equally, if you don't have a question, an N in the chat box is just as useful uh, to me so I know we're, uh, we're all on the same page. Uh, let me just see the Q&A box. <coughs> Can you show analysis of gold? Gold, yeah. Uh, boom, boom, boom. So gold, uh, looking for a three wave correction now to ultimately test uh, 1830, and then maybe we see another leg uh, to the upside. Uh, dollar CAD on daily time frame. <coughs> so look. Dollar CAD. So, I mean, we, you know, until we take out this trend line on the dollar CAD at uh, now currently at 124, uh, the pressure remains really on the downside in terms of the dollar CAD. You can clearly see the channel here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, no divergence. So what, what does that mean? Well, more likely than not means that we've got to see a 13 swing complete. <coughs> so we might see pop up here back into the prior lows but then ultimately we should see another leg to the downside before we see a more significant corrective move. Um, and when I say, because we need, we want to see divergence on the, on the low before we can start to think the current impulse is, uh, is complete. Okay, any other questions? Okay, if there aren't any questions, guys, I'm going to wrap this one up here. I hope it's been uh, been useful for you. And, uh, and we will uh, reconvene at the same time next week. And in the interim, have a great weekend. All the best. Thanks very much.